Hi everyone, welcome to Artist Palette. Um, I'm a little early, I should have waited to start by seven. So um, I'm just going to set up. It's my first time using my webcam. Um, so it's pretty exciting. I've got new, um, some new equipment. Um, so I'm just going to take a minute to sort of see how to adjust my, my setting. Maybe turn off my phone. <laughs> uh, if you're watching this after the live event, um, you can probably just skip to like 10 minutes in, and that's when the drawing will begin. I have to draw around my tripod, so it's going to be a little tricky. I'm going to play with my lighting a little bit. That's too much. Hi, Joanna. Nice to see you again. Um, I'd like to test out to see if you can hear me. If you're in the chat, um, can you just let me know um, if you can hear my voice? I just want to it's my first time using the webcam, so I, I don't know how the audio is working. You can hear it. Perfect. Awesome. Yay, I'm not too bad at <laughs> technology. Awesome. Okay. I'm just getting my tools ready. Sorry for the crinkling. I'm running out of a 6B pencil, as you can see how tiny it is. Um, if you're wondering what these are, I just bought them on Amazon. I haven't tried them yet. They're a um, pencil extender. So when your pencils get really teeny tiny, you can just... I think you just pop them in here. And it's like new. Hmm. Awesome. Um, now I usually rely on natural lighting um, because the graphite, it's shiny when I use a light. Um, so if at any point it starts to get a little bit too hard to see, just let me know and I'll try to get my lamps sort of adjusted. I just can't point them like directly at the drawing or else you can't really, it's hard to see what I'm doing. Uh, my tools that I'm using is just a um, regular HB pencil. So on the bottom of your pencil you can see not this one, it's worn out. Um, usually at the bottom of your pencil, here we go, you can see a number. Um, so that indicates the size of your lead. It's not focusing. Anyways, it's down here. Um, so it'll say HB. So HB pencil is your regular standard drawing pencil. Um, so the H basically is a thin lead, and then the B is the thicker lead. Um, so the HB is like a nice standard lead. Um, and then 
I'm also using a 6B pencil, so not a 6H, a 6B. Um, basically, the, the higher the number on your pencil, the thicker the lead and the darker black you will get. Um, so that's what I used for the really heavy black part in the guitar. Um, you could use a 5B or a 4B would still work great. If you just have a regular standard drawing pencil, that's fine too. Um, you just might have to press a little harder to get that really black, really black part in your guitar. Um, also an eraser. You may also want um, scissors for cutting up your eraser. Um, so, you know, I have a brand new one, so it's got those really nice fine cut corners on it. Um, basically, you're going to want that. I use them like the really pointy corner, um, the same as sort of a pencil tip. Um, so th to get that really crisp, clean line in the string, um, I used, oops, I used uh, uh, the corner of the eraser. So sometimes you just have to cut your eraser to make it, to get rid of those rounded edges if you have like an old eraser. Yeah. And yes, I'm seeing a, a ruler. Um, definitely you can use a ruler. Mine's all and warped, but um, yeah, you can use that. Um, Q-tips. I always use Q-tips um, for smudging in my tutorials. If you have paper stumps, they work better, obviously, um, but it's kind of like cheating um, because over, over time you get the, the graphite kind of sticks to the smudger. Um, so you don't even have to add lead to your paper. Um, so I don't like to use those in my tutorials just so I can show you how to add the lead and then smudge it. Um, I'm just seeing a question. Um, I use Statler, Statler, I don't even know how to pronounce it, um, for my pencil brand. I'll show you uh, this brand here. They're really, really awesome brand. I use it for all my commission pieces and my everyday use. This one's just different because um, they ran out of the HB when I went to Curry's. So that's just a, a Curry's pencil. Um, as well, it's always good to have a blank sheet of paper to cover up your, um, your hand while you're drawing. So I just use this as like a little pad under my hand so that I'm not smudging my work as I go. So I just kind of cover that up. Um, yeah, I'm noticing that my image is actually flipped. Let me see if this, <laughs> nope, that's not gonna work. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like a mirror image. Oh, well. Yeah, so I'm actually drawing on my left, and you guys are seeing it on my right, or on your right, so um, that's weird. It's going to be a little bit of a test run today because, I guess it doesn't really matter with the guitar, um, it'll just be a little bit of a test run because I'm still f trying to figure out my new webcam. Um, so bear with me. Feel free to comment if there's any. Oh, you are? On the left. I mean, like on the paper itself, it's on the left. Like I'll be drawing this way. Like right now I'm pushing to my left, but on screen, it looks like I'm pushing to my right. Yep, you can watch this later. It'll it uploads to YouTube once it's um, once I'm done. Okay, um, so it's seven o'clock, so I'm gonna get started. I'll just repeat. Um, actually, no, that's fine. If anybody has questions as I go, you can ask in the little um, chat. I'm gonna go over my tools just one more time. Um, I'll probably have to repeat that a few times as people join in. Um, so just a regular HB pencil. 
a 6B pencil. That's just a little pe pencil extender I have there if you're wondering what that is. Um, some Q-tips for smudging, an eraser, a ruler that isn't wonky, and um, scissors for cutting your eraser just for to get that nice fine point in the eraser. And I always have a blank sheet of paper to cover up my hand. Um, so that's it. Okay. Yeah, just as we go, just um, feel free to um, comment on if there's anything with the video that's off, um, just so I can try to adjust those things for future use, just because it's, again, it's my first time using this webcam. It's pretty expensive, so I really want to make sure that it's, it's a good good use. Um, hold on, my, I'm just going to turn off my phone here. So I'll always be using my HB pencil unless I state otherwise. So um, the only time I'm using my thick 6B pencil is the black areas. Um, so you can tell the difference is obviously the size. And I've got this pencil extender on this one. And this one's blue. And so that's the thicker lead there. Um, so I'll always, but I'll always tell you when I'm switching, switching over. All right. So we're going to start with um, just the general shape of the guitar. Um, so when you're doing your outline, try and be nice and light with it because, um, you know, sometimes as you add things, you see things start to adjust and change. Um, oh, and now it's blurry. Come on. Yeah, I don't like this. Yeah. It's just not focusing. It's a little irritating. Come on. Here we go. Stop doing that. <laughs> um, so try and be nice and light with your outline. Um, and then, you know, because it's easier to erase a softer line than it, is, than it is a harsher line and also when you're doing your outline it's just sort of you know you're just sort of playing around at first okay so it's just a straight line and then a big curve about midway and start to i go like a bunch of times like i go i make my um Uh, like when I'm doing a circle or something, I, I go over my line a few times because um, it kind of helps you find that rhythm in your hand. Don't just do one line and commit to it. You know, life's about exploring. Okay, so there's dipping out, dipping back in, and then back out. Um, so when you come back for that second curve, it's um, larger. It goes farther out than the first one. Maybe not that drastic. That's a drastic turn there. I'm going to bring that in a little bit. Is it still blurry? Very blurry? Okay, now, okay. I think it's probably going to do that little weird focus thing. Okay, and then you can clean up your lines afterwards. Okay, 
I'm getting comments that it's blurry and then it's not blurry and then it's I'm just kind of wondering maybe if it's where your your connection is. See, I'm seeing it on my computer and I can it looks fine to me, so I'm not too sure. Well, I don't know how to fix it because I'm not seeing, you know, on my screen it looks not blurry. Okay. All right, so that's the... Um, just that outline. So then we're gonna do a second little, we're just outlining that black part. Okay, so come in like a little, like half an inch. And straight down. And then we're cutting across, so it's like a sharper, like a little corner. And now we're just making a little rim around that corner. So you're just um, making a parallel line to that edge. Just like a little thin line. Okay, so um, now we're gonna make that um, the neck of the guitar. Um, so we kind of have to start with the circle bit. So kind of like midway, like where the little arch is, like just sort of, like sometimes I just draw a little ghost line to kind of show, I'm gonna get rid of that light for a minute. Just a soft little line that I don't want to keep there. So it's just like a little guideline. You probably can't even see it on screen, um, but just so that you can tell kind of where it is. Um, now we're just going to make that circle. Okay, so we're starting with a smaller circle first. Okay, and then we're going to build around it. Okay, so start with one circle, and then there's going to be one, two, three, four, five little surrounding circles. So this one is that big, that black circle that we're doing, and then we're doing one thin little white line around that. So now you got to get a little bit more... Um, like start to define this first line so I can kind of tell where your next one has to go. Okay, circles can be hard, so don't worry, don't stress if it's not perfect. Okay, so that first one is just a little thin one, and then we're gonna do a little bit of a thicker one around that. So give it a little bit more of a, like a finger width apart maybe.
that one's going to be black once we fill it in fill it in a bit i don't know if i introduced myself my name's karen karen with an i not an e not that it matters but Okay, so there's number three, and then there's two little white pieces. It looks like one big thick kind of piece, but there's actually two rims around it. So one more. Oops. You can do it. Okay, so I know it looks confusing. Stop. Come on. <laughs> Sorry, it's focusing. There we go. Ha, huh. found a trick. Okay, so I know it looks like a lot, a lot of circles going on. Um, so now we're going to build that neck. So that neck of the guitar cuts right in to those circles. So just draw a line across and then it just comes up to meet this piece here. So you can use your ruler if you like. I, I generally don't use my ruler a lot um, because I like to practice my lines, but um, feel free to use it. Uh, there was five circles, Joanna. So it was like this first one was, it's the black one. And then this, uh, there should be like a little white one. And then that will be, this will be black in here. This will be white. And then there's gonna be another ring. It really, actually doesn't matter too much. Most guitars are just different. Um, so if you're finding that your circles are looking like if it's coming out here and you're getting them way too big, um, don't stress. They can be kind of whatever. Um, you can, every guitar is sort of, it's got its own design. Um, so don't stress if your circles are, there, if there's less or more. Um, but there should be about five Now you can erase that inner stuff. Now from there, we're gonna have to build our, um, this little, I don't know, sorry, I don't know all the stuff that's on the guitar. I don't know what it's called. I know the neck and the, <laughs> the strings. That's about it. So whatever this thing is. Um, now I probably, if we wanna measure it out, we'll go inches. It's probably about an inch away from the circles. I always just eyeball everything. It's just straight across. And it kind of just meets the edge of that, the circle rim. Uh, that is very slanted. I don't usually draw flat, I draw with my things sticking up on like a easel when I'm drawing. So um, just for filming purposes, I have to have it flat. So sometimes my perspective is like a little, little odd or off. Um, so kind of dip it down. So it's like a little bit of a um, diagonal and scoop it out. 
There's like a teeny tiny little scoop there. A bridge. Thank you, Miriam, if I said that right. Oh, a fretboard. Okay. Um, so yeah, this dips down. And then coming out from the side, it's like a little um, scoop, and then it just joins up into that. Give that corner a little rounded. I did that a little bit too square, so it's a little bit more rounded. This is the fretboard. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, this is the fretboard. I know what that is. Okay. So the difficult part with this is that there's like, everything's layered. Um, so first we have to do, we'll call that the fretboard, if that's correct. <laughs> um, and we're going to do all the little, I guess, the little fret pieces. So um, the lines that are going horizontal to break it up. And this is where you can use your, your ruler. It might be a good idea. I'll even do so. I got one of those bendy ones and it's pretty old from like high school. So I'll do my best here. Um, so I didn't do them very, so I started with um, the bottom. Um, and they're just about, I didn't really do them too far apart. They're just a thin little wooden piece. I'm just going to get rid of my stuff that's in between. So you can see. So there, you can hardly see it, but there's like a little, little line right here. Um, and then I did probably about a centimeter apart from the next one so you can i just usually eyeball things if you want to get super technical you can um measure them okay so it's just like two little lines and we're just working our way up Be nice in the comment section, please. We're doing art. It should be fun. Is it? Oh, that one's thick. Whatever. Try and like evenly space them. That one's wonky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll squeeze one more in there. I'm just going to fix this one. It's a little too large. Okay. Now, um, we're going to 
I think I did the strings next um, because they have to be white that like usually if you're layering something you would I would fill all this in first and then we would erase the strings um, but the strings are so kind of particular that we kind of have to fill in the fret board um, kind of individually like this piece takes a long it, it's not a long time but it's a little tedious um, so we're gonna do the strings so first it's kind of this part get like mine are wonky a little bit like don't stress if they're kind of odd um, looking just because it, it is hard like we have white against black and then like all these little pieces in between so um, yeah, I'm just gonna check on comments. Can we try and keep the comments just for the drawing, just so I don't get lost? I don't want to lose people's if they have questions. Um, yeah, so the video will be up um, after the event is over. It just up, uh, uploads to Facebook, so. Um, it stays there, stays there forever. Okay, so we're going to do, I did one, two, six strings or six strings on the guitar. Um, so I'm doing six little circles at the bottom. Um, but first there's like this white little piece in the bridge. Okay, so I'm just building a little, there's like a little white line. doesn't go all the way it's just like a little and then I scooped the edge I'll try and bring it up okay I'm going to test my camera and see how the the um, focusing goes aha so I just scooped the edge there And then right below that is the circles. We'll try and like imagine where the, the strings will be. We can always erase these if our strings don't line up. So I'm just doing six. Circles. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, sorry. Come on. Focus. I know it's blurry. Sorry, one second. I know. I'm just trying to get it to focus. Look at my finger and focus. What an annoying webcam. Uh, one second. If I do this. No. Yeah, I know it's blurry. I'm just trying to get it to refocus because it won't. <laughs> Trying to give it something to focus on. It's like, Wah. just gotta like play with my pencil here. Come on. <laughs> okay. Easy does it. Yay, I got it to focus. Okay. Very annoying. I'm sorry about that. I can't, like, 
I can't like manually focus the thing. It's like a webcam thing. I don't know. I bought it online. Okay, so now with the strings, we're doing kind of the same as the fret, just long ways. And now you're trying to line it up with those dots. This part's kind of tricky because it's like, ah. Uh... Oh, look at that. It's blurry again. Okay, well, hopefully it just like manually unblurs itself. There we go. Okay, that's too hard. I'm just winging my first string. Okay, give it like a, it's very thin. Um, you kind of have to go thick first because once you start filling in, you'll... Um, Notice it gets thinner as you're going. I find it way too hard to use a ruler, so I'm not going to use mine. It's just way too, I can't, I never liked using them. They drive me nuts, so um, I'm not going to use mine. I just like to eyeball Just find it a little bit too hard to like show where it's going. And it's good to practice your line work anyways. I have to start working around my tripod, so this might get a little awkward and wonky. Okay. Alrighty, so we're ready to start filling in. Um, so I'm going to stop there for one moment and see how everybody's doing. Um, and take this time to catch up on some comments. Or if there's anything you're struggling with. Um, so in the chat, you're maybe send me some thumbs ups and let me know that you're ready to move on to the next. Who, who's the troll? I don't see. <laughs> Is there someone like being abusive on here? I don't know how to block people, but be nice, please. Uh, yes, uh, Ruby, you'll be able to, like, once this is done filming, like, live, um, and I end the stream, it just uploads to face, uh, blah, to YouTube, and it'll just be on our page forever, so you can just watch it afterwards. 
if you kind of uh, missed a part. Seems like everybody's on the same page, so um, we'll start simple and just fill in. Oh, okay, yeah, if you're young, like under 18 or something, do not give any information out on the internet. Please maybe ask your parents before, you know, doing that. Um, even though if it seems like a, um, you know, a light conversation or something, don't, don't give out your personal info ever. Even if they're like, I'm not a stranger, I'm a really nice person. Don't. Okay, so what I did, um, Um, I'm starting with that center, so I'm going to work out, oops, from the edge. Um, I am, I don't know what it looks like you're on your screen. So I drew mine on the left side of my page. On screen, on my computer, it looks like it's on the right side of my page. But I'm on the left. Um, and I'm right-handed, so I always work from left to right. But that's why whatever hand you have or use, um, always just cover up the hand you're working with. That way you're not dragging your lead around. Um, you know how you get that big kind of pad of graphite on your, your hand. So just cover up your hand and because um, we're working with a darker lead, you will kind of notice that it, it's a lot thicker. There's gonna be smudging kind of everywhere. So definitely, grab that scrap piece of paper. Um, so now I'm, I've switched to my 6B pencil. So this is my thicker lead. Um, I am, um, so this is like the, the black thick lead and I'm gonna fill in that first circle. So it's just going straight in for it. If you don't have a 6B, you can use a 4B or a 5B. Basically the, the thicker the lead on um, but like, or sorry, the higher the number on your pencil, the thicker the lead, the darker it's going to be. Okay, so just I'm kind of outlining my strings as I go. Just kind of being a little bit more mindful and careful. And then just filling in. If you jump ahead, we're not filling in right to the edge over here. Okay, so just, just between the strings are we going straight black. Uh, I don't know about charcoal pencil. I, um, I've never used charcoal pencil, so I don't know what it's like, but um, give it a go. Is it like smudgy? I'm just worried that it might smudge too much. Whereas you won't have the control like a lead. You can still use a regular pencil, like you just might have to press a little harder. Hi, thanks for joining. Um, so I'm using a pencil extender right now, which is pretty awesome. Um, it helps save some money on pencils, that's for sure. I got them on Amazon, not that I really condone using Amazon too much, I would like to buy from an art store but Ontario is on it's like fifth lockdown I'm exhausted and I've given up I really try to do local businesses as much as I could but anyways I got these pack of pencil extenders on Amazon they're like 10 bucks maybe not even like seven bucks they're pretty pretty awesome 
but if you can try and buy from a local art store. Um, if you start to kind of like, just be careful when you're using these this thicker lead because it it's harder to erase. Um, so if you go inside your string, it might kind of mess you up a little bit. This part's kind of easy, so it's just a little bit tedious. We'll get into some shading and stuff in a bit. Yeah. Does anybody on here play guitar? I'm very terrible at it, i got to be honest. I did like grade 10 guitar in high school and I was getting pretty good, but I just don't have that ear. Oh, nice. My, my boyfriend's been trying to teach me drums <laughs> and I gotta tell you, it's, it'll make your ears bleed. Not very good at all. <laughs> Ooh, that's very nice. Cap girl 62. Congratulations. That's awesome. Maybe you can frame it. What's the difference with electrical guitars, Ruby? Is it easier? Oh, that's so nice, Susan. Oh, hi, Karen. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Love fellow Karens. Um, okay, so the only difference with this one coming down, um, so this is my last, I'm going between my last two strings here. Um, so at the top, it's black. And then I'm starting, I fade out a little bit as I get to the bottom section of it. Show you in one second. Well, that's nice, Anne. It's kind of awesome. Everybody's doing it for their husband. Cute. Maybe I should just give this to my boyfriend. It's his birthday actually next week. Okay, so as you get to the bottom here of these two strings, I'm just going a little lighter. I'm starting to fade out. See how it wasn't completely black? I'm scared to lift my... Uh, I don't want to lift this up to the camera because then it's going to like defocus. So it's just down here. I just went a little lighter than black. Just a lighter shade. I'm going to give my outer circle a little black outline. And then it's the same idea on the outside. This last little corner of the, the inner circle. So it's black at the tip, the top of it. And then as I get farther down, I just start to lighten my hand so I'm not going full black, I'm just starting to loosen up the pressure in my hand. So you want like a nice gradient. So it's going black to dark gray, 
and then as they get lower maybe just a little bit lighter nice even flow so it looks like it's going in oh that's nice michelle And while we're on that circle, ow, sharp. Um, now we're skipping a um, little section, a little circle. So that there's going to be a white one right beside that. And now we're going to the next circle. We're going to have a little white rim. And then we're doing black again. And this one's just pure black. There's no fading, there's no shading. So you kind of have to work in little teeny tiny sections over here because you're kind of going between your strings. So there's first a white rim and now we're going for a black rim. So I didn't even do anything with that white rim yet. What you can do so you don't lose your string is give it a little outline between the white like over top of the white. Okay, I'm going to attempt to bring it up. Okay, and I probably will have a moment of doing its fritzy little blur. Let's see. Start it over here. I've outlined my string where it goes over top of the, the white rim. Ah, I knew it. Aha, okay. Fighting technology here. And what we're going to do some shading like to make the strings look like it's pop like popping off. Um like the white sections, but um just for now we're just you can erase the little bits um of line like line work that goes over top of the strings as well so you don't want any lines running through your strings that's the tedious part of this this drawing it's trying to keep those strings nice and keeping it keeping them white Everything comes with good patience. Art is all about patience. No matter if you're painting or drawing anything, it's all about just taking your time and enjoying the process. I guess guitar could be like that too. Anything worth doing takes time. Yes, kneaded erasers, I always recommend those. I just know that it's not very, it's not like a common household item. Um, kneaded erasers are awesome for getting those little in-betweeny parts. Thank you, Joanna. Um, because you can pinch it, so you can kind of mold it to be a nice sharp little point. Um, that's so you can get in between those little finer, finer edges. Um, so yeah, I always recommend one of those if you do have them. I try not to use them too much in my tutorials because I know they're they're not not everybody's got them if you're not used to drawing. But they're awesome to have. Only like a dollar or something at your art store. They come in like a little square. Thanks for joining, Kathy. It'll be up on the the YouTube page, you can just go under, I think we place them under like playlists. So if you go under drawing sessions or drawing 
tutorials. It should be under there once it's uploaded. Oh, you can draw, Tanya. It's, it takes time, practice. Okay. Um, so then there's two white sections. You can give that little line between the two. Like I have two little, you can even just make it one if you want. It doesn't really matter at this point. Um, I'm just giving that middle section of my two white circles a little bit of a darker line. Oh, no. Ah, nice and slow. Okay, so there's two circles there. And then I'm just, I'm not even drawing one out. I'm just making a dark rim around those two white sections. I'm just going on the edge of that circle and making just like one thick sort of black line around it. Again, it doesn't, I might thicken that a little bit more. Sorry if you see my, my nose. I'm just giving it, oh no, I broke my pencil, rats. I bet there's not even any lead left in that. Thanks for joining, Tanya. That's awesome, Tom. We just posted one of, um, I'm going to be doing Baby Yoda or Gru Gru or whatever his name is for um, Father's Day. So I'm making it into a card. So it's Baby Yoda and it says, Yoda best father in all the galaxy. That's going to be another free one coming up in June, right before Father's Day. You don't if you don't have a dad figure, maybe a grandfather. Okay. So that's the inner circle of the guitar, easy peasy. So we're gonna do the tricky part. This part's tedious. Um, so I'm switching back to my, um, actually, uh, let's just do this bridge while we have our, our, our thick lead in our hands and we're, um, so just fill that in. I didn't do any shading or whatnot, so it's just pure black, easy peasy. Just might as well get that out of the way.
I kind of make my little boxes around, like my little sections, I find it a little easier. Oh, and Tom, I'll also be doing BB-8 from Star Wars. That's going to be a free one in June as well. Seems I'm doing a lot of action or comic, comic figures lately. Bye, thanks for joining. Um, when I'm doing a bigger section, it's easier to fill in by using the side of your pencil, not the tip. So I just kind of, I mean, I'm running out of pencil here, but because the side of your lead has more um, lead to it, obviously it, it's easier to fill in a larger space. I'm running out of pencil. I haven't, no, I haven't done Iron Man. That would be a cool one. I've done a lot of, um, like for my commissions, it's always dogs and people's grandparents and stuff like that, which I enjoy doing. But my personal work has always been like recreating action figures and superheroes and stuff. Um, I did, I got really into like Batman. So I've done like the Joker, Batman. Um, I had a big Star Wars series for a while. I haven't done Iron Man, though, but that'd be pretty cool. I do love him. And Robert Downey Jr. is awesome, so. <laughs> I got really into, like, the Umbrella Academy as well, so I did, did them... King Cobra would be cool. I haven't watched that yet. I haven't really been watching a lot of TV lately. If I do, it's like Seinfeld. <laughs> I don't really know if anybody wants a drawing of Jerry Seinfeld on the wall. <laughs> uh, who knows? In the middle of those little dots, you can put a little black circle, a teeny tiny little circle right in the middle of those. Um, now that we're getting a lot of black lead on our page, um, I'm going to cover up your hand. So you don't want to smudge this lead. The darker the lead, it'll just be harder to erase. So I'm just putting a little teeny tiny black dot in the center of those little white ones. <laughs> Kramer would be a funny one, like that painting in that episode. He's a funny character. I did Gordon Ramsay. He's like one of my favorite people. I just love him. I know he's like mean, but if you actually like watch his stuff, he's trying to instill passion into people, which I just love. Okay, so that's that. Uh, I'm gonna clean up my strings a little bit. Um, Again, if you're kind of running out, if you have like rounded corners, you, I just always cut off a little sliver of my edge and it kind of resets my eraser to have like a nice little point. Or again, you can use a kneaded eraser.
That's okay. And just erase your little white circles. Or they could be like if they're pure black. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just try your hardest to erase them. Okay, so now I'm switching back to my HB. Um, basically, I won't be using this the thicker lead until the end where we're, we're just filling in the rim. Um, but again, if we're working over top of it, we don't want to fill that in yet. Um, so now we're going to go in. And now we basically have to shade underneath each individual fret. Um, so it's going to look confusing a little bit, but it's quite simple. So it's just, again, it's tedious. Um, so I'll start down here so you can kind of see because this part's all jumbled up here. But um, basically, so just with my regular pencil, so I'm not using my dark lead anymore. We're going to use some Q-tips as well. So we're going to make it a little easier. So underneath that line that goes across okay, I'm just putting in a darker section underneath it so we're shading because that part of the fret sticks out right so we need to shade underneath so it looks like it's popping so just add a little bit of dark underneath Well, that's okay, Tom. It'll be up after, and then you can watch it. It'll be up on YouTube forever. Um, so now I'm taking a Q-tip, and I'm pushing that lead down. Okay, so I'm just going in between my, my little strings. Um, and then you can kind of... So, so that's just to sort of blend out the shadow. I'm going to come up to the camera. Again, I'm going to have some little bit of blurriness for a minute when it comes back down. So just bear with me. We'll see how it's shadowed. And then I'm just using the side of my pencil to sort of fill in that the rest. So I only shaded it so it blends out the shadow. So I just smudged it with my Q-tip so it kind of blends the shadow out a little bit more. And then to kind of give it that grainy texture because the guitar is wood, that's why I use the side of my pencil. So now I'm just sort of doing like a little gradient to try and blend the shadow down. It's busy. Okay, and then um, make sure you kind of outline your strings as you go. And also kind of give another outline to your fret as well, just so it doesn't get lost in there. Okay, so it's, again, this part's tedious because we got to work around our strings. Um, so take your time. Yay, it's not blurry. Yay, Logitech. Probably shouldn't be throwing out names, but whatever. I don't know, copyright issues or whatever. So I just kind of outline my string going up. So you're not outlining your fret where it goes over the string so it kind of it gets a little complicated because it's kind of grid like um, and also when you're smudging you might kind of smudge into your strings so again just try and go in very softly and erase and clean up your strings So 
It's okay if they're wonky. Mine are a little bit wonky. Just try and clean them up as you go. Yeah, this one's way wonky. You know, obviously, the longer you spend kind of being mindful and careful, you know, the better it'll turn out. Okay, so let's just, I find it easier to do one step all the way um, instead of, um, I might just be pressing harder and also take in mind um, that um, the camera kind of adds contrast. So in person, it's not as dark and heavy. If you want it to be like more contrasted and like heavier, um, just press a little darker. Um, so yeah, I find it easier to do the same step all at once. That way you're not switching between tools. It kind of quickens your pace a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to go and shade underneath all my frets at the same time. Just do the same step all together. You can do it however, if you want to go fret by fret, that's easier for you. Yeah, this black part is the 6B pencil. That's that really heavy lead. Um, again, if you're just joining in now, um, the thicker, or sorry, the higher the number on your pencil, the thicker the lead, the darker it'll be. Um, and your shadows can be a little different. Like maybe one shadow is like a little bit longer. You know, it doesn't have to be all the same. It can be a little, a little different on each one. Don't stress too much about trying to make it the same. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. I'm having a hard time seeing. I should probably be wearing glasses, but I don't. I always like to take um, suggestions for my free events. What would you guys like to draw in July? I've already got my June one, so kind of got to skip out on that month, but maybe in the future for July or something. Give a suggestion of what you would like to draw. Might, yeah, <laughs> Kim Cobra. Yeah, I know you'd like to do that one. I might take a break from doing characters just because I'm I kind of filled up my June with a lot of characters, but definitely will put that on my list for the future. Ooh, a sea turtle, that'd be cute. I feel like another event just did that. I did do a horse before and a tiger. They were paid events. Maybe I should do an animal. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it's a flamingo. That would be cute. The only thing is that it's in pencil, so it's black and white. So sometimes it's... Ooh, but I could do it in pencil crown. I should do a pencil crown event for a free one. I haven't done one in a while. Ooh, seashells.
seashells would be nice with color pencil crown okay so now i'm gonna jump to my q-tip and just smudge all that down I feel like a beach would be more for painting because then you get that nice color. That's kind of the, the bummer part about drawing is that I can't always feel limited sometimes because I can't always have that like punch of color. Landscape would be nice. They take a while, so usually I, when I do my landscapes, I do them in something, like a little object. Like at Christmas, I did like a barn, like a wintry barn landscape inside a bulb. Um, one of my free events was like a, a mountainscape inside like a bear silhouette. I usually like keep my landscapes like something creative like that. Ooh, marker would be fun. Um, so I'm going to outline my string all the way up, make it a little easier before I kind of fill in. Using the side of my pencil. Hmm, <laughs> no packa. That would be funny. I love alpacas and llamas. They're such awkward little beings. I guess not little, they're ginormous. Someone just said something that I wanted to do. I need to write it down. One second. Uh, oh, seashells. I like the idea of seashells. Okay, so I've outlined my strings. Ooh, a fairy would be super cute. I don't know. I like snails. And I'm just cleaning up my strings, so I'm getting rid of the lines that go horizontal through them. And I'm just using the corner of my eraser. Make sure it's nice and sharp corner. Penguins, penguins would be cute for winter. Definitely do that in the winter time. Um, so now I'm going sideways with my lead and just kind of filling in over top of those little, each little little box, just to give it some texture and darken it a little bit. Remember to kind of outline your fret as well. I'm going to give it a little bit of a 
outline so it pops time are we at um so the event set an hour and a half usually my i'll have to talk to the, the coordinators usually my drawings are two hours um this shouldn't be well m much longer like can't see us being another another hour here but definitely won't hopefully go over a little bit of an hour and a half so um apologize if you have to go at any point we're almost done anyways there's just a little bit of shading to do so probably be like 8 45 depending where you are 20 minutes maybe I am doing a 3D flower, um, but it is a paid event. And that's a sunflower and it's gonna be in pencil crown. Tickets are only 10 bucks, so if you ever got some spare monies to, to spend and you wanna kind of learn something different, you can always join our paid events as well. Um, I use my kneaded eraser to clean up any smudging. If you're wondering what I'm doing. Um, okay, so our next little part, so once you're done that, um, oops, I just kind of erased my work there. Is we're going to fill in the guitar and then we're going to add some shading in the strings and then do our, our last little bit. Um, so I'm just going to see um, how everybody's doing. So maybe just if you have a second, um, send me some thumbs ups or little emojis or something. <laughs> Suzanne. <laughs> Uh, I always have brain farts like that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Colored pencils and pencil crowns, I think, are uh, just based on what you use for terms. So once you're all done with the, yeah, the fret, just let me know. Seems like we're all on the same page. If you're not done, take your time. Um, I'm just going to move forward. You know, I can always finish that up. Oh, there's uh, one little thing in the fretboard. Um, I just added little circles randomly. They don't, you don't even need to like, I just kind of added wherever I could kind of squeeze one in. I really don't know the whole guitar layout, but. Um, those are like, there's little dots in the fretboard to show like the little, again, I don't know. <laughs> I just kind of threw them in there. So if you know kind of how they work, you can maybe be a little bit more um, careful with where you place them. Thank you, Paula. So fifth, seventh, tenth, and twelfth fret have dots. So if you want to be technical, that's what you can do. That would be 12. I got one right in Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to move on to this part. So what I did first, I'm just going to re-outline this. So you don't have to do this part. It's just so you can see. Kind of got it erased there. Um, so I'm going to use the side of my pencil. So maybe give your pencil a little sharpen. Okay, and this part's really simple um, because our pencil naturally 
makes a grain texture. Um, if you're using, you might notice a little bit of a difference if you're using like regular printer paper, if, if it doesn't have a texture to it, um, you might not notice, but um, if you're using actual sketch paper, it'll naturally just create a grainy texture with the pencil. So you might not even see this on camera. I'll press a little harder, but you can kind of go um, to your own pressure. So I'm using the side of my pencil, so I'm not tipping it up. I'm not using the point. I'm like almost holding it sideways because um, that lead, you know, the longer the lead, you know, the more it fills in. Okay, and I'm going up and down to create. I'm going to press a little harder. And again, it doesn't matter. Some guitars are lighter, some are darker. So it just naturally will occur. Um, so careful around your strings. I'm just kind of filling in. And we're still going to add a little bit more texture to this after, so don't worry if it's not perfect. Just try and keep it in a linear direction. Uh, HB, yeah. Your HB is like your standard center pencil. Oops. So the H is like, think of your H pencils as a very light pencil. Like I would do it. I use those for doing dog hair. Um, something like with fine, fine hair or something that I want to be very light with. Um, and then your B pencils are your thicker leads. So they have like more of a, a grain and a texture, a darkness to them. So that HB is like your middle point of a pencil. Um, what are you struggling with, Anna? What is it the texture part? Don't worry too much if you don't get that texture. We're gonna add in, I'm gonna still help you. Um, we're going to add like another layer of, it could be your paper. If you're not using like sketch paper or if it's like a fine, like a flat, smooth paper, you might not notice uh, much grain. It's okay if you don't get that grain. I'm gonna help you kind of cheat it. This is just a, it's like a base coat. So basically when you're drawing, um, you never just wanna work on top of white. Think of it like painting. You're trying to make a base coat and then you're putting on your details on top. Okay, so now you can kind of throw in those little gray points. Um, so again, just using the side, just kind of creating wood grain and just tossing in some darker little strokes of gray. Okay, you can use even the tip of your pencil a little bit, maybe not too hard, but you know, you can add in like darker strokes. Okay, so I'm just kind of always up and down, always nice and straight. So don't try not to think about it too much and be like line, 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 line. You know, just toss it in. Um, wood doesn't really have a pattern to it, so try not to draw perfect. I'm just throwing it in there wherever... You know, maybe just 
get a little rougher with it. Wah! Whip her in there. Don't think about it. You can even have some heavier lines. I'm just whipping them in. Whipping them. Ugh. Whipping them in. Jeez. It looks flat right now, but once we add that black, it'll pop. You always want to accompany something light with dark. so it helps make contrast. Um, you can also, if you don't like the grain, you can take your Q-tip and add in like smoother little, you know, you can just do the same with like little strokes. Maybe it's more of a varnished guitar. So you can make it a little bit more softer, excuse me. Um, There's not really a wrong or right way to do it, to be honest. Okay, and you can also take your eraser, use the like the edge and make um, little hi highlighted parts. So you're just doing the same or you're just throwing in some line work. Um, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Smarty, Smarty. Um, this will be uploaded, like, I'm almost done, so, like, give me, like, 10 minutes, and I'll upload to, um, YouTube, and then you can watch it and catch up after. And so you can just, like, forward, fast forward to where you kind of left off or need to be. Uh, yeah, Patty, if you want to do, like, do you mean any sort of, like, darkness? Like, if you want a darker guitar, you could maybe pump it up to, like, a 3B or a 2B pencil. If you want, like, a heavier, sort of, like, a um, different um, stain, like, if you want a darker stain. Um, I'm going to wait to do the shading on the strings just so everybody can catch up because that's kind of like a thing you kind of want to play around with. Um, just get it to a point where you like it. So what I'm going to do, just because this part's really easy, uh, I'm just going to fill in the edge. So it's just pure black. So I'm switching back to my um, 5B or my darker lead. There it is. Um, so if anybody's finished that section and you're just kind of waiting, um, you can join me and we'll finish that little black part. And then at the end, we'll just quickly add in our shading for our strings and then we're all done. Just remember to cover up your hand. This part's going to, we don't want to, <gasps> oh my gosh, I almost knocked my camera over. Um, at the end too, 
just going to give you a little reminder. I like to see everybody's work. So if you found us through Facebook, um, we had created an event. So on Facebook, if you go to Artist Palette Durham um, and find this event, um, go into the discussion part and I'll add a comment section and you guys can upload your photos when you're done. Um, I'd, I'd just like to see how everybody's turned out. So I don't know if you can show me through here. Look at my teeny tiny baby pencils. Beedy, beedy. Oh my gosh. I almost knocked it over again. Ah. Just remember, like, as you're, if you, like, decide to upload them and show your work, don't compare yours to other people. Um... Like, don't be like, oh, I wish, oh, mine, mine's not that good. Um, everybody's at their own skill level. Everybody perceives information differently. Um, and also we see things differently. So don't beat yourself up if it's different. Your art is meant to be different. It's not supposed to be the same. You know, I'm only here to guide you, not to, you don't want to photocopy someone else's work. So it's okay if it's different and it's okay if it's wonky and it's okay if it's not that good and you're just starting off. I can't, don't expect it to look the same. And even mine don't look the same. They're slightly different. Kind of impossible to draw the same thing twice anyways. Bye, thanks for joining. Uh, what do you mean cut the paper? I just used the whole length of my um, sketch pad. Is it out of focus again? Hope not. This thing's a bugger. Okay, one last thing before we finish. Okay, we just have to, there's one little thing with the strings. It's, you can hardly even see it in uh, this one, but um, just to make them pop. All right, first I'm just gonna outline them so they're kind of sticking out a little bit. Um, right over top, so uh, choose one side, so either your left side or your right side of the string, so it's going to be the same on each string. About like a little sliver beside it, draw a nice faint line beside the string, right over top of the white circles. I'm going to come up for the camera to the camera for this part. Uh, see right beside each string. 
So it's just a shadow of the string. So it's a little distance beside it. And it's just with my HB pencil. So I'm just drawing a darker line. Okay, and it makes it pop right off the guitar. See that little teeny tiny detail makes such a big difference. Boom. There you have a guitar. Um, so I'm going to take a moment and just see if anybody's got any questions before I um, stop my video and upload it. Um, again, you can, on the uh, Facebook page, remember you can, uh, I'll make a little comment and you guys can upload to the comment section if you want to share your drawing. Um, just remember to be easy with yourself, um, your learning. So if you're, if you kind of struggled today, just remember that it's, it's all about learning. Um, so don't beat yourself up. Um, thank you everybody for joining and supporting me as an artist and supporting artist palette means so much to us. Um, so I hope you guys had fun and you learned something new today um, and that you enjoyed yourself. Mm, Andrea, what's a fixative? <laughs> I've never heard of that. Thank you, Susan. It was nice to see you again. Thank you. Oh, um, yeah, that's why I just use like, um, sorry, Andrea, so I don't smudge. I always have a sheet of paper under my hand. I just don't usually use them in my tutorial so that you can always see my image. But usually if I'm drawing, um, I have my hand underneath Yeah, and sign your work. Thanks, guys. I'm going to upload. If you have any other questions, you can always um, message us on the Facebook page, and I'll get to the, I'll get to them. Thanks, everybody.